in today's devlog, I want to talk about automated testing for in-game dialogue. So I've been on this solo game dev journey for about a year now, tinkering away at my game, just enjoying every minute of it. And I have been pretty carefree and loose so that my creativity can just kind of thrive and do its own thing. But from my long experience as a software developer in the industry, I knew the time was coming where I needed to get serious about streamlining my development process. And one of the major steps towards that is through testing. Now, I want to be perfectly honest. I was not thinking about testing anytime soon. I mean, my games are still in its early stages, like the prototyping phase. So steps like testing felt like an overkill. So why am I talking about testing now? Well, something happened that changed it all. A few months back, I dropped a video announcing my new dialogue plugin for Godot. And I thought it would be a nice way to end the year on. You know, just share something cool with the community and then just kick back, relax, and enjoy the holidays. Besides, I was also in the middle of a move, so I thought it would be a great way to give myself the time to take care of that and also plan for the new years of content. Little did I know that video would spark a ton of interest and I suddenly found myself knee deep in the bug fixes and feature requests. I was diligent in answering all the questions, addressing any bugs, and I had to manually test after every chain. And especially with how complex some of the features can be when they're used together in the dialogue plugin, I needed ways to feel more confident about regressing. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term regression, it is a situation where a piece of code used to work correctly suddenly stops working after a code change or an update. It's like when you fix one thing and all of a sudden, something else breaks. So yeah, I needed some automated tests to run after every change for my plugin. I won't bore you here with all the technical details, but basically what I ended up doing is I created a bunch of tests and made a system where I can play through the dialogue as if I'm a player. And you know what? It was a game changer. Get it? Game changer. Okay, well, all right, ignore that. But here's a really cool part about it. Uh, while I originally set out to test only the plugin's functionality, I accidentally created a way to test a dialogue from start to finish. I ended up making an end-to-end -end testing tool for my dialogue plugin. I thought, why not share it with the world? I mean, I already shared the dialogue plugin, so why not share the tool that allows you to test while using them. And I know there are plenty of devs out there, like some of you, who can really benefit from tools like this. So without further ado, here's a sneak peek of what the testing tool can do. So here are the tests I created. The way I have set up is I have this test scene set up to have all the tests. And if you look at the code, you have these um, test functions and I'll get into the details um, later. So here's my test dialogue. And you can see right here, I have a bunch of different dialogue notes set up that basically is different scenario of use cases that you might see in using this easy dialogue. You can clearly see what the test cases are from the name of the notes. There's a base conditional display where I'm trying to test out the conditional statement, the if and else functioning properly. I have this plain text display with multi lines, single line, transition testing. There's a combination of conditional transition where the transition happens as a result of a conditional. I'm testing some choices. So I have this uh, sample or test dialogue set up. And the idea is my test run will go directly to each of these nodes for different test cases and then run it and verify that it had executed correctly. And if you're familiar with writing tests, this should be pretty obvious to you. The way I have set up, you can see there's multiple tests in an array. And then I have set up a little iteration that runs each of these tests as a function. And this is what the test actually looks like. And you can set it up however you want. You can imagine that this is an actual game dialogue. And then you are just accessing the specific dialogue node directly to start the test from. But let's uh, dive into what the simplest form of testing looks like. So I have this tester object 
which is a instance of this dialog test. And the way it works is that I can set the initial state of the test and then I do this start test and you can see that it takes the test name. And if you look at the function start test, you can see that it takes in the dialog file and then the name of the node that I'm starting to test from. And the way I verify the test is by calling the assertion. When you assert something and then if it fails, it stops the test at that point and then it breaks. So you know that the test fail. So you can see here in the single line plain text, in this test, I wanted to test the most basic use case of the dialog plugin, where there is a single line of display text. So the idea here is that when a node that has a regular text line like this, when I run this, this should be generated as a response, no more, no less. So you can see here, I set the state, I have the test name set up as the node's name, start the test, and then I assert that the response is, this is a single line test, period, which matches right here. And then it'll either fail if it doesn't work correctly all of a sudden, or uh, succeed and move on to the next test. And you can see there are different test tests here. So you can see the conditional base case here. So the way I'm testing it is I'm going to the base conditional display, which is, so base conditional display, I have some response generated starting from starting test. And based on the variable, if the test variable is true, it'll say variable is true. If it is something else, then it should say variable is not true. And then I also wanted to make sure that the, the way the coding is formed, that it also moves on to the next line outside of the conditional. And the test is set up so that I have this test variable that is being tested. I can set the state so that the state has this value as true. And then I'm asserting response to be this starting test variable is true, post conditional text pick up. If it's not, variable is not true, post conditional text picks, pick up. So. This will verify that. So you can see how I'm using the set state to uh, set, set up the test condition. Another interesting thing is um, making a choice. So this test, it displays choices selected, and then I have two prompts, choice A, choice B. And then if a player selects choice A, the transition goes to choice A transition target, which says choice A transition target. And then if player chooses a second option, it'll transition to this node instead, and then display choice B transition target. And over here, the way this is tested is I run the test. I can assert that this response shows the right text and then write choices. Once I confirm that, I can resume the test with a choice selected. So choice is indexed zero, one, and then if there's more as two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. So I wanna test choice A. So I will say tester dot resume with choice zero. And in that case, I want to assert that the choice A transition target shows up as a display if it transitioned correctly. Otherwise, I'm resetting up the test and then I resume with choice one, then I should see choice B transition target. So yeah, there's that basic case of making a choice and resuming a dialogue, asserting responses in different ways, and then also just setting up and starting a test. Another interesting uh, testing assertion that I created is custom signal tests. I got a lot of feedback saying that this custom signal feature is really powerful and flexible, and a lot of developers are enjoying it. And I'm particularly proud of this. It's a simple implementation that allows you to do a lot of things. So I'm personally using it for basically everything. So in this case, I wanna say, let's say I have a dialogue logic where in the middle of it, I am anticipating and expecting a signal to come. I wanna make sure that the parameter that the signal outputs is correct. I mean, many ways why this might change, right? If you're making some dialogue changes, you've made a mistake in the format and all of a sudden the parsing of the signal is wrong or you decided that you're gonna change it so that it has one more parameter. But then, um, if you don't update it in the test, the test will fail. And you want to update the test so that it catches all the other places that you use this exact signal um, to be picked up. So we got the assert custom signal uh, related responses here. You can see the first time it goes to the custom signal test, there's no signal. So I can assert that the custom signal not was received in this round. And then I'm resuming with choice 
zero, which is the only choice available. It'll resume and it'll transition and then it should say triggering and then uh, respond with signal. So you'll see that the I can assert that the custom signal is this parameter, which is test signal one param one, which should match this. And then of course it has a response. And then I have one more that does two signals in a single call because you want to do base case and base case plus one as a test. And last but not least, let's say you don't care about the actual wording of the response because it changes so much. Maybe you are localizing and then sometimes it's English, sometimes it's Japanese, sometimes it's some other language and making a test case for every language doesn't make sense, but you care more about a complex logic. So maybe you're using this node logic and conditional and signal to handle some sort of, I don't know, a dice roll or a combat. So all you care about is that these um, transitions are looping correctly and hitting all the right nodes. Then you can use something called uh, assert dialog node visited. So in this case, node visit test, which is this one right here, it should read this and stop and wait for choices, right? So in this case, when it starts, it should only visit no visit test. And then once I move on, it immediately transitions to the second one. So then I'm expecting both of these nodes are um, reached. So you can see in the test right here, when I start the test, I assert that the dialog node is visited, the node visit test node, which is the first node right here, node visit test. And then once I make the choice and resume, I want to assert that these two nodes are visited. But because I'm using this to test the functionality of the tester as well as everything else, I want to make sure that the tester correctly um, identifies that the, the first node that was visited is not considered visited in this round. So I have the assert dialog node not visited. Um, there's definitely a future expansion to this assertion, but I think this is a good start. That's what I have so far. So this is what it looks like if I run the test. So it's empty because I have nothing here. Um, and you can see I, I set up this uh, printout to make sure that it runs. This is an expected error messaging. So this is all passing. If it fails here, let me show you what it looks like if it fails. So let me just make this fail by putting one more period. So this will fail because assertion is wrong. And then if I run this, it runs and then it breaks saying that assertion fail expected response was this is a single line test dot dot that was what i was saying that the test is expecting but then the actual response was this is a single line test period pretty neat right i really hope it can be useful for some of you out there as well and again just in case it wasn't abundantly clear already this testing tool is specifically for testing dialogues that are created using my dialogue plugin so if you're curious about using this dialogue tool so that you can take advantage of this testing and along with all the other features you can watch the tutorial here and I'll be releasing a video on how to use this testing tool for the dialogue plugin very soon. So stay tuned. I am Ezda Dev. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.